Okay, so now we're going to talk about the definitions of what all that means in the function. So again, if you look back at our function, um, we have an A, H, and a K, or an A, B, H, and a K. And we're going to talk about all of those. And hopefully you've remembered from the warm-up that each of these different, uh, you know, where the position is affects the graph differently. Um, a couple things to notice, let's just kind of focus on here. Notice that A and B are multiplied by our function, whereas h and k are either added or subtracted. And that's very important because when we look back at our warm-up, we notice that the multiplication um, did something different. That kind of like vertically stretched or compressed our graph. Um, also, the negative, when we're multiplying by negative, that dealt with reflections, either reflection about the x-axis or reflection about the y-axis. On contrary, when we were dealing with like addition or subtraction, that was shifting the graph up or down. So that's kind of the main, th main thing to rem rem take away uh, from that warm up. But it does get sometimes confusing to remember all of those. And that's why we're going to do, you know, quite a bit of practice uh, to really make sure we can kind of remember and feel comfortable what everything is doing, uh, and how it's applying to our function. So just a little summary of everything. I kind of broke it down into transformations inside the function compared to transformations outside the function. And basically, if we can identify what the transformation is, if it's inside the function or outside the function, that can help us remember what the what's going to be going on. So notice that A and K, like if you think about f of x here, A is being multiplied, K is being added. Those are outside of the function. Whereas inside the, inside the parentheses is my B and my H. So if it's outside or inside, affects the graph differently, and that's why I want to go over that, covering that here. So when we have the absolute value of A is larger than 1, that's what we call a vertical stretch, and you saw that in the first example. Um, I actually didn't do any vertical compressions in our warm-up. I guess I didn't. I don't know why I didn't. Oh, well, I guess I didn't want to talk about them. So if we have a vertical uh, compression, you can see that's when the absolute value of A would be like a fraction between 0 and 1. When A is less than zero, that means A is going to be negative. That's a reflection about the x-axis, which we saw. And then if we have K, that's going to be a vertical translation. So if it's adding, we're going up. And if we're subtracting, we're going to shift the graph down. Now let's talk about the functions. Oh, that's actually switched. Huh. I messed those out. These are outside. And these are the ones inside. Let's move that up. My bad. I messed. I switched those around. So here's are the um, here are the functions inside. The absolute value b when it's greater than one. That's actually a horizontal compression. And we saw that in these first two examples. If you look at that, um, if you look at here, here is a outside the function. Here is b inside the function. Here is my vertical stretch. Here is my vertical compression. So they look the same. They kind of did like the same. Um, uh, they kind of had the same effect or a similar effect to the function, but they weren't exactly the same. And sometimes they're going to be the exact same, um, but it's important to be able to distinguish what type of transformation they are. Um, obviously, when an absolute value b is like a fraction, that's going to be a horizontal stretch of the graph. When b is negative, that's going to be a reflection about the y-axis. And then obviously the other thing to kind of keep in mention of this is when we have a horizontal translation, that's an h, that's shifting the graph left or right, kind of notice that's the opposite sign. And again, that kind of comes back from the formula. Notice the formula is x minus h. And another way to kind of think about that is like x um, plus a opposite of h, right? x plus a negative h is the same thing as x minus h. So the way, the reason why I like writing it like this is because when we're inserting this into there, like we noticed and we took a look at, uh, let's see, where's the one? Here, plus five. This was not shifted five units to the right. This was shifted five units to the left. And the reason being is because, again, this, was, this can be written as x minus negative five. And x minus negative 5 is the same thing as x plus 5. So it's important to be able to take your function and rewrite it in our function notation that we use to make sure you can identify the correct transformations. All right, so basically, I think I did 3, 6, 9, 12. I baked 12 um, basic functions that you should know. And I tell my students um, that you know when we're going through this curriculum, it is very important that you know these graphs. And not only know these graphs, but know some of the characteristics of them so you can quickly graph them, that you do not have to rely on graphing technology at all. 
Um, and what I'm going to do in this case is I'm actually going to also define the domain and range rather quickly, just so we can make sure that we have those and we can, you know, kind of see that. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to like say it out loud because I'm not going to write it down just for time purposes. I think you, we already talked about domain and range. So uh, let's just kind of talk about the characteristics of each one. I am, I am uh, leaving out the uh, step function as well as logistics functions, just because we don't cover it. Uh, it doesn't come across much in the curriculum. So therefore, that's why I'm focusing on these 12 graphs. And now that I've presented these 12 graphs, they're all fair game for any other point in the lesson. So here we have the identity function, which is like your linear graph. Uh, notice that this graph is always going to be increasing. Uh, the domain is all real numbers, and the range is all real numbers. Uh, and also, it is a odd function. Function It's symmetrical about the origin. Here's the absolute value function. You can see it's decreasing and then increasing. Uh, the domain is all real numbers. The range is from 0 to infinity, where 0 is included. It is also a even function um, because it is symmetrical about the y-axis, and it is bounded below. This one is not bounded. Uh, the quadratic function here, uh, or, and this has a absolute uh, minimum at 0, 0. Here's the quadratic function. Again, you can see it's decreasing from negative infinity to 0, and then increasing from 0 to infinity. It has an absolute minimum at 0, 0. It is bounded below. It is also a even function because it is symmetrical about the y-axis. Cubic function. The cubic function you can see is always increasing from negative infinity. Oh, I forgot to talk about the domain range. Domain range is the same thing as this. The domain is negative infinity to infinity, and the range is from zero to infinity, um, where zero is included. Cubic function. Uh, this function is always increasing. You can see there is no uh, maximum or minimum. There, uh, the function is odd. It's symmetrical about the origin. The domain is all real numbers, and the range is all real numbers, and it is unbounded. The square root function. You can see the square root function is always increasing. Uh, the domain is from 0 to infinity, where 0 is included. The range is... Um, the range is from 0 to infinity, where 0 is included. It is uh, not even nor odd. It, um, it is bounded below. As you can see, that it does have an absolute minimum at 0, 0. Uh, the cube root function. So the cube root function, you can see, is again another function that is always increasing. It does, have, does not have a maximum or a minimum uh, point. It is symmetrical about the origin. And the domain is the set of all real numbers. And the range, even though it looks like it's approaching uh, these asymptotes, you can actually, it's, it is just further increasing um, very slowly, though. So the range is going to be all real numbers as well. Therefore, the graph is unbounded. Exponential function. Oh, how the, oh the reciprocal function. I got moved over there. Oops. So that's supposed to be right there. Sorry about that. Um, so let's take a look at the exponential function is, let's say it's always increasing, right? Um, the domain is a set of all real numbers. The range, um, this graph actually has a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0, so it is bounded below. Um, and the range is from 0 to infinity. This graph is not even or odd. It does not have any uh, symmetry. And it is bounded below because it has that horizontal asymptote. The logarithmic function here is um, always increasing. Again, the domain is from 0 to infinity as there's a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. The range is going to be all real numbers as it goes down to negative infinity to infinity. There is no symmetry in this graph, so it's not even or odd. Um, since the range is from negative infinity to infinity, the graph is unbounded. And I think that was it. The reciprocal function. You can see the reciprocal function is decreasing from negative infinity to 0 and then it decreasing from 0 to infinity. Uh, it is also odd, since it's symmetrical about the origin, x and the y-axis. The domain is all real numbers, except x cannot equal 0. And the range is all real numbers, except y cannot equal 0. And the graph is also unbounded, since the graph continues. Now let's get to our trigonometric functions here. Trigonometric functions here, sine. Now this one, we'll get, we'll spend more time onto these. I just want you to kind of understand the basic um, ideas of these graphs. So you can see these graphs are increasing to decreasing, to increasing to decreasing. Um, we'll talk about those intervals later. You can see that there is absolute. Oh, there is no absolute max or mins on all of those graphs. 
You can see that there are absolute max and mins. I'm not going to talk about the points right now because I don't want to overly confuse you, but they do have absolute max and mins. Therefore, this graph is bounded and this graph is bounded. Um, this graph is symmetrical about the origin, so it is odd and it is bounded. I think I already talked about that. Increasing the domain is going to be all real numbers and the range, it looks like it goes down to negative one to one, which it does. Um, so the range is from negative one to one where negative one and one are included. You can see here the domain and range is exactly the same. Increasing, decreasing intervals look like they're the same, but they are kind of like shifted a little bit. Um, this graph is again bounded, and this one is not symmetrical about the origin, but this one's symmetrical about the y-axis, so therefore it is even. And then last but not least is the tangent function. Uh, tangent function actually has some vertical asymptotes. We will investigate where those vertical asymptotes occur. So we can see that the domain has some undefined values, but I don't want to get into that right now because we'll spend a whole chapter talking about that. For right now, let's just see that this graph is always increasing. It's kind of interesting. It increases and then it jumps over the asymptote and then continues to increase. Uh, the graph is also unbounded. It continues um, infinitely uh, up and then infinitely down. And the range is from negative infinity to infinity. The domain is all real numbers, again, as I mentioned, except for these un undefined values, which we'll talk about. So, And then also, this graph does have symmetry, which is across the um, origin. So therefore, it is odd. So now what we're going to do is we'll go ahead and get into uh, example number one.